Hi everybody, it's Denise from Forest Grill Micro Farm. Uh, so I had a whole set of videos already done. And I decided I didn't like them. So now I'm back again with a different set of videos. All right, for the next few weeks, I'm working on my iris batch for my Etsy store. And I have this obsession with irises. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful and I've always loved them. And so for inspiration for dyeing, I'm dyeing up. Uh, irises basically and I went through some of the different catalogs for seeds and plants and picked out some of my favorite irises oh and they do have names and I have a list somewhere but offhand I cannot remember but of course it's your basic purple iris which for me is the Siberian iris it's the one I have growing out in my yard and I, I do the bats a couple different ways. And the, there's some iris yarns I've spun on the past few years. And I have a couple different ways to do them. Sometimes I just do the flower part. So you have the purple or violet of the iris. Uh, and some of the irises are really dark purple and just completely solid. Some of them have the white veining. Or the white streaks. Some of them are very white with just a little bit of um, violet on the edge. So it, it, I can get, you know, several different irises just with the violet white combination. Also, you have the bearded irises with the large um, orange, yellowish centers. And so sometimes I include that color in the bat as well. And then every once in a while, especially if I'm doing um, the, the rare times I've done roving or the, the few times where I've done two bats uh, to match, um, I make a green bat that will be the stem of the iris. And so, um, oh, I wish I had brought the shawl down. I have a shawl I did in the Sacred Heart pattern, and it's an iris bat. And it goes down from orange to white and green at the bottom. So the green is supposed to look like a stem. So for these ones right here, I didn't add any green to them. I'll do a separate set of them with a little bit of the, the emerald green. I did dye the emerald green. It's in the dye pot. But I didn't put any in these particular bats. Okay, so here's a orange one. I think the name of this um, was called Sunset. And it's it's a very, very golden iris with very little white streaks. So this pretty much has very few streaks. In, it's got a little hint of burgundy in it. Just a, a tad bit. You have to see the photo of the iris to, you know really get the feel for it okay and then this one this was the fuchsia iris and it has a really nice orange center that the plant does and so there are orange golden highlights in this bat And then this is the purple and white, the violet and white. And this particular bat right here uh, has Angora in it. Okay, so so far all of the bats, they're all 100% alpaca. And they'll be four ounces, about 20 bucks in my Etsy shop. And then the, the Angora bat, Angora alpaca blend, it's just... It's just uh, Alpaca with a, a tad bit of Angora, just for fun. Okay, so now here I have on the table, uh, these are going to be the next sets of bats, and this is all alpaca. You can actually, what's interesting is the different types of texture in these bats. Uh, this is alpaca, and it's not Surrey. This is uh, Waiakaya, 
I can't remember how to say it right. And there's very little crimp inside of this fiber right here. Very little crimp. Okay. So it's very sleek, very smooth. Almost like you would see Surrey, but this is definitely not Surrey. Okay, now these guys over here, they have a lot of crimp. And this one even more crimp. And you can see how the texture is just completely different. Let me see if I can get that a little closer. How the texture is completely different. And you can tell really by the way it dyed. This one is more of a jewel tone than these other two. It shows you how that cuticle is smoother. Okay, so. So now, this is the periwinkle. And when I put them in the pot, uh, I don't, they're not very spread out and I don't stir them. And so what happens is you get these blotchy spots by design. And when I blend the fiber, that's how I get the um, the gradation, the subtle gradation of color. It gives me kind of a heathered look. I really like the periwinkle because it breaks. And it breaks in the, the most delightful ways. I tried to adjust the camera so you can get a really good idea of what it looks like. Now, um, this is very light at the top. It looks a little darker to me on the camera. But it's very light. And then as I turn to the bottom, you see the very dark periwinkle. And in the middle, there's this lavender color. Okay, that looks a lot better. See how dark it is over here? And the light up here, it's even lighter on the other side. Then it breaks into this. You can see that lavender color that it breaks into as I turn it on the camera. It's going to make a very pretty uh, bat and a very pretty yarn. And it's going to look very much like the way that the irises uh, do darken on the edge and the way they fade towards the center. It's going to be lovely. And I may add, I may add a little bit of the orange in there. May, may or may not. Because like I said, not, not all irises have that big orange pollen center. And then this is the brilliant blue. And it broke as well. That very dark blue to the very pale, almost a baby blue. And you'll be able to see pictures on my Etsy shop when I finally get them carted up. This is the periwinkle. And uh, this one was a cherry red. So I just let the everything break up pretty much in the pot. Let it do its own thing. So now I'm going to show you the new brother drum carter that just came the other day. Okay, so here are my two drum carters. The first one was the baby brother. And I purchased the baby brother some time ago when mostly what I was working with was medium wools. And it's a 72 teeth per inch. And the really neat thing about the baby brother is that the teeth are taller than the standard drum carter and so it's pretty specific for art bags which i don't really make a lot of but you know if you're putting all kind of curly locks and things into a bat this will pack on those big art bats it's really nice and this is the bat or the bats i uh, got off of these guys this is actually alpaca and it went through very well into the 72 teeth per inch carter uh, i didn't kill it 
which is really nice. So for the longest time, basically that's what I used. And, you know, I could feed some alpaca through and some alpaca I could not feed through. And it worked out okay. Then I got the Angoras and started working with finer alpacas. And um, it became a bit of a challenge to feed Angora and some of the softer alpacas through this guy because 72 teeth per inch is really not optimum for those finer fibers. And a lot of times I don't card the Angora unless I'm selling Angora bats or mixing things. So it wasn't a big deal for a while. But once I really started processing large amounts of finer fibers, uh, I needed a, first of all, I needed a drum carter with a finer tooth per inch. And I just needed a bigger drum carter to make bigger bats. And so this is the standard brother drum carter. So it's, it's still brother. I, I like brother. I got another brother. Got my baby brother, a brother. Okay, so. Here's the Brother Drum Carter. This is the standard one. It's got the fine teeth on it, 120 teeth per inch on the drum, and I believe that's 90 uh, on the liquor end. And basically, it makes these really nice bats. I believe they said the bats are either eight or nine inches across. This bat right here is like four inches across and 22 inches long, roughly. And so here, the iris bats are all being made on the standard brother drum carter. See how nice and fluffy these guys are. You know, it's I've gone a very long time as a spinner and I've, I've always processed my own fiber from the very beginning. I started with the Chevy Eye, and that's what I was spinning on, processing my own fiber from the start. And so I've gone quite some time with, without buying a, a drum carter. And then I went a lot longer without buying a full-size drum carter. And so uh, I just figured I got to the point where I'm processing more fiber, processing a different range of fibers. And so I needed to upgrade. At some point, I, I really like to get like a pack green, like small cottage drum carter because I'm really getting to a point where I'm processing that much raw fiber. And I do prefer to process my own fiber. I, I'd like to send out to a meal like Morning Star or Ohio Valley uh, just for the experience. But I really do like to process my own fiber. So that's the new guy right here. I haven't decided what I'm going to do about, um, you know, finishing it. As you see, I didn't finish this guy, and I kind of wish I had. So I might clean this guy up and paint it black like the Louette and take this one and just put the poly on so that it looks like the ladybug. We'll see how that goes. So I've been um, been doing a lot of work for my sock project, and then I'm spinning up a, a lot of fiber for a friend, uh, Sandy, with the luscious alpaca, white alpaca you keep seeing everywhere. So I really have not had a great deal of time to really work on a lot of projects like I was doing before, and so I will get done with that alpaca soon and I'll be back to more projects. At any rate, I did pause to do one of the uh, challenges this week for Fly Magazine's 51 Yarns and I haven't followed them all but this one I thought I'd just give it a go and this week is Worsted or not Worsted is uh, True Woolen. Woolen yarn is something I don't generally spin. And there are a couple reasons why. Uh, first of all, it's kind of hard for me to get true woolen because I don't have hand carters. I have a carter that uh, I made that I use for flicking. But it's not, I don't have a set, so I'm not really hand carding and making Rolex. 
So that's that's my first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, I don't do a lot of long draw, and that is because long draw makes this light, fluffy, airy yarn. And in general, I don't make light, fluffy, airy yarn. I make hard, um, durable worsted yarn for weaving or socks or things like that. So I don't do a lot of long draw because I don't make a lot of the yarn that comes from long draw. And thirdly, because the long draw technique, the long draw woolen prep and spinning technique are best for fibers that are shorter. And I think it was Rachel from Tiny, it was a Tiny Fiber Studio. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, she had pointed that out, and I can't remember what she said she had really heard that from. But it's true is that when you're hand carding, the longer fibers don't hand cart very well uh, on the hand carders. And so you're looking at fibers that are uh, less than four inches, less than three, three inches or so. And so you run into the problem like this. This is the Cheviot. And it's longer than the carter. So it doesn't really card into that nice Rolag, uh, Rolag very well. And as you know, I don't like short fibers. I don't really like to spin with the short fibers or deal with them. And so I don't use a lot of fiber that's suitable for the long draw. So excuses, excuses. But I decided I'd go ahead and give my long draw a practice because, hey, that's what this, that week is all about, is doing things that are out of your comfort zone or, you know, explaining your processes. So this is the my long draw sample. And it was from uh, 4 inch alpaca because basically that's what I had. I couldn't find the, the really terrible shirt merino. I don't know where it went off to, somewhere in the, in deep in the closet. And I didn't have the hand carters. So I had to make faux legs off of the drum carter. And, oh boy, I probably should have videoed that because it was like the worst thing ever. My faux legs were too tight and I could not get them to draft very well. So I had to take them apart and draft them like I was stripping pieces off of a bat. And it was pretty much hilarious. Even the dogs were laughing at me. But I still managed a long draw and I had to like almost put the other hand behind my back to keep from smoothing out the fiber. And there's a few places where I got a little smooth uh, fighting with the fiber. And for the most part, it turned out long draw-like. And I'm, I'm kind of pleased with that. So maybe I'll do a little long drawing at some point on the great wheel. I really need to use that great wheel. Probably no time soon, though. But anyway, uh, go to the Ply Magazine and look up the 51 yarns challenge and take part in the challenges do the hashtag on facebook and instagram uh, so that everybody can have a look at your pictures and it'll get you out of your comfort zone get you to be a little more adventurous and it's just really nice to see other people's handwork handiwork uh, when it comes to spinning and creating different types of yarns i just want to thank everyone for stopping by I'm going to get some carding done now, and as I finish projects, I'll go on and make some more project um, goal-oriented videos. But if you have any questions or comments or any videos you'd like me to make, uh, please let me know. I actually did finish writing out the Angora myths. I just need to go ahead and make the video. And it, it's possible that the Gore Miss video will show before this one does. just depends on how the day goes. This is prime gardening season uh, for those of you who garden, you know. So I'm out with the dogs and gardening a lot more. And soon we'll have some dog videos. Dogs in the park. And they are pretty hilarious to watch. I might give one of them a doggy cam. But anyway, thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell. So when I finally get around to making some videos, you'll be notified. And please visit me uh, on Facebook at Foursquare Microfarm, on Instagram, Foursquare Microfarm, and 
take a look at my Etsy shop at Four Square Microfarm. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a great day.